All right, I think today's video, we're gonna cobble together a temporary solar panel rack. <sighs> Got a bug on my nose. Out of this old wood that I have right here. I think we could do that. What do you guys think? Should we do that? Let's give it a try. All right, so if you guys saw my last video, you'll see that I set up this rack right here, this ground mount solar panel rack from Signature Solar. Um, I actually like it a lot, and I think I'm gonna be ordering another one here pretty soon, uh, just not quite yet. So I think what we're gonna do is, I've still got seven of these panels right over here left and I would like to use them. Of course, I can't use all seven. I can only use six because you know how the voltages and stuff work out. So we're gonna take six of those and we're gonna mount them together just like I did in that last video. Although I don't have any new brackets, I'm gonna have to make some out of some random metal that I have and set up a janky solar mount probably right over here and face it west so I can have a little more charging power, you know, later on in the day. And for just such an occasion, I have these old posts and a couple old like two by sixes that are some treated wood. I think we could cobble together a temporary solar panel rack out of this junk right here. So let's get to it. Holy crap, screw city. Can you see all that? To a 33 degree angle. That is nine foot. The edge of the panels will be right here. From there, we'll probably go up 24 inches. All right, so we're gonna put a post right here at six foot from the top. Put one there, that's our center. All right, then we're gonna move 50 inches away and put our other post for the top cross member about right there. This is not exact science or anything like that. We're just making it happen. <laughs> the wood is really bent. That's okay, we're gonna use it anyway. Boom, I knew I'd have a reason for you to be out in the backyard with me. I can keep all my tool batteries charged up, no problem. I've been using this for a couple of weeks now and I've taken it pretty much everywhere I go. I basically leave it in my truck now because I never know when I'm gonna need to be able to recharge something. Uh, I've taken this to a wedding to keep all of my camera batteries and my microphones charged up. I've used it out here in the yard a few times and again, I'm using it today to recharge that battery for my drill because I forgot to do it. Anyway, I was gonna say, depending on whenever you're watching this video, if you've been thinking about getting anything from EcoFlow, now is the time to do it, or at least at the end of June to the mid of July. They're having their big Prime Day sale. You know, everything is on sale right now. So if you are interested, I've got a discount code below, and I've also got some affiliate links, you know, if anybody is interested. So anyway, let's get back to the build. All right, this post right here is really, really bad. It's really rotted out but I don't really care. We're just gonna cut it in half and use it for the legs to hold up the rack. You can definitely see some bugs coming out of it. Okie dokie. Now we drag this across the grass and tear it up and put it over here into position. Oh yeah, I'm totally tearing up the grass. Don't tell my wife. Lift. What do we think? Is that ugly as all get up or what? I think so. 
it's beautiful ugly. Actually, I think that's kind of perfect. Huh, perfectly ugly. Let me check the angle on it. Right here is, that ain't bad, 32, 33. So it's not bad. We can work with this. We'll do a couple of minor adjustments and then we'll be good to go. Tilt this back a little bit. The wife is gonna love it. 31.8, 31.7. Oh yeah, solid. All right, uh, I do have one more post of these and I can do like a cross beam or something. I think I'm gonna call it and say that's good enough. I'll put two more screws in there and we'll, we'll go with it. All right, here's where we're at right now. A whole pile of crap wood thrown together. And actually it's pretty darn solid for how crappy it is. Definitely nothing as good as that, but I just want something over here so I can make use of those panels. Oh yeah, beautiful. We call this patina. No, I don't think we call that patina. We call it infested with bugs and rotten. We'll cover this heap up with panels and we'll be good to go. And I just threw some black spray paint on those brackets. I didn't even bother sanding them down. I just threw the paint right over whatever was there. Is that two panels together, wire side together. Lift them up and then let me through it. Take my little homemade bracket, set her in the groove and center it as best as you can. Self tap and screw and then put one on this side so it doesn't fall over. Boom, all right, there you go. And then you just do the same thing for the other ones. For these two closer ones in here, I do have to bend up the metal and pre-drill the hole because the aluminum in this specific spot is really, really thick. And I usually end up just breaking the self-tapping screws. So that's the only thing that's different on these right here. Oh, I forgot one. There we go, brackets installed. Boom, all six panels are put together and let me tell you what, it takes a little bit of time to do a crappy job as I did for this set. Yeah, my little strips that I made, I mean, they weren't straight or anything like that. So it kind of made the panels not go together as good. That's okay, we're just making a temporary setup to test out the new west angle. All right, well, they're definitely twice as heavy which makes sense. All right, there we go. Finally got the panels mounted to the ghetto rack. And sticking true to our ghetto ness, of course, I made my own little brackets for the end over here. And yes, those are not even stainless steel screws. Nice. I used as many of the mid clamps that I had. I only had three. So we had to end up making our own right here. So there we go. There's the DIY mid clamp with just some regular scrap aluminum. I mean, for how ghetto it is, I'd say it didn't turn out too bad at all. All right, it is 2 p.m. and it is really, really hot and muggy out. So I just did some temporary wiring. Uh, these panels have these really old connections on them. 
So I'm waiting on some MC4 connectors so I can replace these. And I'm also waiting on some wire so I can take care of this. This is THHN, it's not rated for like outdoor use or UV or anything like that. So don't do this. So anyway, these are wired in a 2S, all right? 2S and then 3P. There's the specs of the panels right there, all right? And then we're all just kind of dangling over the top post there and going into this small um, breaker box right here. And I've got three fuses just in here. Out of there, we got a little dangly bit into some MC4 connectors. And then we're going into some PVC conduit just run across the ground over there and into my house. Again, uh, just temporary. I'll fix this a little bit later whenever I get some, some actual PV wire and more MC4 connectors. Anyway, it's really, really hot out here. These panels are gonna be super duper hot, but we can go inside and see what we're producing at 2 p.m. Alrighty, inside, we'll do a quick little rundown of the wiring. So basically it comes down through this PVC conduit right here we go into this circuit breaker box right here. Uh, we're coming in through this 12 AWG THHN wire, and then we go into a 20 amp circuit breaker. Out of the circuit breaker, we go into some 10 AWG, loop around, and then we come over to this side and we go up into this charge controller. So if we look and see what we're making, we're doing 955 watts. So I'd say that's not too bad. 17.5 amps. Incoming voltage is 95, battery voltage is 54.4. So not too bad, actually, not too bad. Uh, we wanna check the other array real quick. We're doing 1.5 kilowatt, 27.9 amps, nice. So I would say that's not too bad for a quick little temporary setup. Uh, these are actually pretty much the same, except for this one's got five parallel on it and this one's got three parallel on it so these are pcm 60x charge controllers uh, 60 amp open voltage is 150 so i could only do a 2s on these with those solar panels so there you go not too bad there's a few things i still got to do is put the cover back on there do some wiring and stuff outside like mc4 connections that i'm waiting on and the PV wire so I can fix that mess of wire out there. And then the funny thing is, since I needed to add this, I ran out of connections down here because I was I had temporarily had everything set up on here, but there was no room left. So I made this ugly mess right here. <laughs> so yeah, don't look at that. This is all temporary. This isn't even remotely how it's gonna be whenever this whole setup is done. I just needed a couple more connections right here, so yeah. So anyway, there you go. Not too bad for a quick temporary ghetto setup. Oh, we wanna look at the roof and see what we're making on the roof. Haha, <laughs> 69. 69. <laughs> or 3.7 kilowatt, 3.8 kilowatt. Not too bad. Nice. All right, cool. Boom. There you go. See, anybody can make a ghetto-ass solar panel rack out of some random crap that you have laying around the house. It doesn't have to be pretty or perfect or anything like that. That's actually pretty darn solid for how crappy it is. I mean, I don't know how temporary it'll be. It could sit out there for a couple of months, maybe even until next summer. Who knows? Uh, we'll see. A few more things I gotta fix, like some wiring and some MC4 connections whenever those show up. I mean, I don't think I need to do a video on replacing MC4 connections because everybody should know how to do that by now, but I mean, I guess I could if I really, really needed to. Anyway, there you go. Don't forget to like that smash button for more ghetto ass builds, and I will see you on the next one. Oh, one more thing. Happy 4th of July. Beat that, Andy.
Bugs.